In the previous video, I used Node and a Node package called Express to make a very simple web server. All it does is it spins up a server listening on port 3000. And if I run it, it looks, it serves up anything that's in this directory called website. Okay? And in that directory called website is a little index.html file that says this. And now I see that in the web page. In the web page. <laughs> I don't know if that didn't make sense. Okay, so what do I want to add to it? The goal of this video series is to make an API. Now, there are a lot of different ways and styles and flavors and designs and kinds of ways you could make an API, I'm sure. And the kind of API I'm going to show you is a restful API. And I like to call it, I like the idea of it being restful because I want it to be relaxing and enjoyable, a soothing, a soothing API. Um, but REST is like a, a, essentially like a style, so to speak, of how, um, it's a broader term, it stands for representational straight state transfer, and you can <laughs> link to the Wikipedia page and you can read all about it. But it's really a style by which users of the API can make GET requests and receive information back from the API. So, and let me try to describe kind of the basics of how it looks and works. So I'm gonna erase all of my diagrams from some other previous video, and let's, let's think about what's happening. So let's say you have, um, you're making an API about flowers. Maybe it's about rainbows. Make one about rainbows, but flowers, I'm going to use flowers right now. Flowersapi.com. So HTTP. This is your website, your web server, your domain, all that stuff. You might go to flowersapi.com and you will see the index.html page that's there. That's the web server we've written. We've written. You might go and say, like, uh, slash about. And maybe, actually, you have in your website directory, your public directory, a folder called about with another index.html file. And when you go there, you see that one. So this idea of paths with slashes is something that you typically see to navigate through directories of a website. However, these slashes and the things in here don't just have to be directories, they can actually signify a route. So for example, what if I went to, I'm just gonna call it fl flowerapi.com slash search sunflower, right? What if I went to this, and this isn't actually of directories, these are, at, these are commands that I am issuing to the API. I'm saying search for this particular flower called sunflower, and I want to get back maybe some big JSON, all this information about sunflowers. So this is an idea of a route. Um, and when you build an API, you might build different routes for different kinds of ways of accessing the data. You might make a route for getting all the data, or for searching for one piece of the data, or a route that signifies, I want all the data, but I want it sorted in this manner. Or I want all the data, but only if the data starts with the letter P, for example. So there's a lot of ways you can use routes. So now, here in the code, this is not the code, I need to start to uh, manage how those routes are handled. So right here, I'm going to start adding that code. So I'm going to add a bunch of carriage returns, and right here, I'm going to set up a route. When a user goes to one of these routes or goes to, in the browser, types in a URL or clicks on a link to a URL, they are making something called a GET request. Please, may I have something from you, server? Can I get stuff back? And you will get <laughs> images, there's a dog barking, <laughs> images, HTML file, CSS, all that sort of thing. So if you want to handle a GET request that goes to a specific route, I could say app.get um, uh, get slash, uh, um, I'm, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, let's just, we're thinking about flowers, right? Uh, flower. And then I need a callback. Um, send flower. Send flower. All functions should be called send flower, <laughs> send flowers. Okay, so I'm going to write send flower. So the idea here is I'm now writing the code. If any user of this API, user meaning a, a, not necessarily a person, but a web browser, some client that's going to connect to it, goes to slash flower, then this function send flower should be executed. That's the callback. Now, the send flower has two arguments associated with it, a request and a response. 
every web transaction, so to speak, when I go and type, you know, google.com or rainbow something something.com, I'm making a request to the server. So all the information about me is in that variable called request. The server then sends back a response. All the information about the server's response is in that variable response. And I'm using this idea of all the information very loosely. Information, data, you know, in request you can find like what was the operating system? What was the browser? What are the headers? You know, there, you're going to see like were there any parameters sent also. The response has things like, ah, I can send back some data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now say right here, response, send, I love flowers too. So if the user goes to slash flower, rather than look for a directory of HTML, CSS, JavaScript files along that path, this is a route that I'm going to handle programmatically, and I'm going to say, I love flowers too. So let's uh, hit refresh. The server's still running. I am now up here going to change this to say, go to the route slash flower. And I see, I love flowers too. Now there's no HTML page. There's nothing. There's just code and the response sent back the response. Okay, so this is part one. But remember this idea of like searching, right? The idea of using an API to search. What I want to do is have a, well, there's a lot of things I can do, but something that at least to get started with is what if I were to search at a second, uh, a second token, a second, I don't know what to call it, a second element <laughs> um, to this route. Search slash sunflower. But rather than, oh, and come back over here. Rather than say slash sun, uh, um, search slash sunflower, what I actually want to handle is not the specific route. I want, if they go to search, I then want the second element to be a variable, so to speak, something that changes every time. So here I'm going to say colon flower. So that indicates that this search, that, that search is the route followed by something that the user enters. And that will be here found in the request. So in other words, I'm now going to go to uh, search slash sunflower. And you're going to see it still says I love flowers too. That's what I'm sending back. But now I can do something more. I can say, there's some data associated with this request. Something came in beyond just search, some type of flower. I can say uh, request.params. There are parameters. Flower is a parameter. And now I can say here, send the response back, I love data.flower2. Uh, data so I'm kind of, I don't like this amount of space that I have here. I'm going to fix this and make this a little smaller. Ah, no, no, it's way too small. Maybe this will get edited for flow. Okay, so here you can see that in, it, I, in the response, I'm actually going to send back something that was sent. Now, what I'm doing here has no, there's no point to it. I'm just showing you the pieces of how things work so we can get to the place where it has a point. So let's see now if this works. If I refresh here, I love sunflower too. And I can put daisy. I love daisy too. And I can put rainbow. It doesn't have to be a flower. And I can put, so in other words, there's a round trip happening. I'm making a get request with this route, search slash something. The server gets that something as a parameter part of the request and looks at it, puts it in this variable data, then pulls out flower. There, so there could be a lot of parameters. So I can add another one. I could say slash num. And then I can say var num equals data dot num. And I can then have a, I was going to do a for loop or something and have it say I love data dot flower so many times. Let's just do that. That's sort of silly, but why not? Uh, so I can say uh, response equals this. And then uh, for var i equals 0, i is less than num, uh, i plus plus, uh, response, oh, I can't call this response, uh, reply, I'll call it reply plus equal this. And then I'm going to send back that reply. 
right? So I've added a little logic. So based on whatever number I get in, I do that a bunch of times. And now we can see I'm getting both a flower and a number. And if I go search rainbow five, I get it. If I do it slash 50, I get it 50 times, right? So the reply is now based on what has been sent into the server. So this is the basic idea of how a route works um, with a get request. Now, of course, there's something later you're going to see. There's also a post request. I can say app.post, and we're going to need that for this example that I hope to ultimately build. But in the next example, what I want to, what the next video, what I want to do is add a little bit of persistence to this. So what I want to do is allow the, uh, uh, create a set of routes where the user can retrieve data and then contribute to that data as well, uh, as well. So we'll see that in the next video.